Secure Ninja TV is in Colorado Springs at the Rocky Mountain Cyberspace Symposium and just across the way is Pikes Peak. I'm in front of an old Pikes Peak railway locomotive that runs on rails. Now in terms of the internet, fiber optic cable are the rails the internet runs on. You don't often get the opportunity to get hands on like this with an old locomotive or the rails that it runs on. Just like you don't often get the opportunity to get up close to the fiber that controls the data center. But we met up with our old friends at Corning and we were given the opportunity to do just that. Get up close to the fiber distribution system. So let's take a look. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja TV again. And we're still at the Rocky Mountain Cyber Symposium. I'm talking to Kevin Miller from Corning. Uh, Kevin, you're a sales engineer here in the Denver and Colorado region. Yes. Uh, Kevin, you've been kind enough to show us what we might see in a data center. Now, as a cybersecurity uh, instructor trainer, I have to show students fiber, but most often I'm going to be showing them in books and slide decks. Kevin is good enough to show us what this actually looks like physically in a data center. Kevin, um, we're looking first at the front of the rack. What do we see? Well, we see LC duplex, so you can see two different fibers uh, coming into the LC footprint. That's this connector. It's a small form factor connector, the most common that you see now. These would be jumpers, generally coming from a switch into your patch panel here. You'll notice uh, we have two different types here. Uh, this is also an LC duplex. This one you can see the two fibers, this one you don't see the two fibers, but they're under there. This is our Corning Uniboot connector, and it is a slightly easier to use product, easier to connect, and uh, just a, a better version compared to what we might call the traditional version. Uh, so is the connector the same, but and the um, where it mates to is the same, is, is, is industry standard. Correct. It's just basically the, the um, release of the connector that becomes a little bit easier. Correct, yes. And then the wrapping of the two fibers in a single cable as well, yes. that makes it a little so bit it's daintier. It's cleaner and a, little, a, a lot yeah. fewer. It is, uh, it's a lot cleaner and there are a lot fewer cables, it's half the number of cables actually coming in and through all of your cable management and routing. Excellent. Well, that does look a lot neater, but again, to, uh, to stipulate, uh, most of these LC connectors, generally, it's unidirectional fiber. There's one fiber for going and one fiber coming back, although there are applications where you would have a single fiber that can have a uh, byway communication. Correct. But this is by dye This is the most common implementation um, in the industry. Now, we see the LC connectors, very, very standard. I also see a different type of connector, Kevin. Tell us about that. Yes, so this connector is a what we call an MPO uh, or MTP connector. And if you zoom in on this, you'll notice a couple of pins here. Between the pins are multi-fibers, either eight or 12 fibers. This happens to be an eight fiber. Uh, it's something that, that Corning came up with a while ago, this Edge 8 product. Oh, I'm sorry, this one actually is a 12 um, on this row. We have Edge 8 up here. Edge 12 down here, but it, it's either, it depends on, on what your need is for, for your customer. Uh, so what's different about this is um, we've, we've just bumped it up to 12 terminations instead of, instead of two in a much in the similar form factor and similar size. Yeah, so the form factor is a little bit bigger where it connects, but there are actually eight fibers inside that connector. Excellent. Um, that's the front of the rack, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about these uh, MTPs a little bit later. Um, oh, before we go, yes. um, normally when we're teaching cybersecurity, when we're teaching A+, when we're teaching um, integration of these components, we think of multi-mode fiber being aqua and single-mode fiber almost always being yellow. It's not always the case, is it, Kevin? Correct. Well, here we are at a cyber show for the federal government, and a lot of times the government will use different colors for different networks, uh, sometimes up to 12 different colors for 12 different networks. So in this instance, we do see some yellow here. It's still multi-mode. Um, generally speaking, that would be a, a single mode fiber, but in this instance, we have aqua, we have yellow, red, blue, et cetera. Um, these are more traditional aqua, that, which indicates that it's a, um, a multi-mode 50 micron. 
Yeah, so in enterprise we'd normally separate the traffic with simple VLANs, but in the military we want to physically isolate the different networks, and that's why we're using the different colors for the fiber for identification. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, Kevin, how does the fiber come in? Can you show us the back of the rack, please? And as if by magic, we can look at the back of the rack. What do we have here, Kevin? All right, so the back of the rack, we have uh, what would be trunks. So these fiber trunks, uh, here's, your, here's your MPO or MTP again, which would connect into the back of our panel. Okay, so that uh, would break out to multiple LCs. Correct, Eight, and we will, yes. Fibers, uh, four or six pair. Correct, so it breaks out on the front to our switches, and then on the far end of this trunk, this trunk would then go through your pathways to, uh, generally speaking, depending on what we're doing, uh, this is a fiber to the desk setup that we have here. So this would get you either to your desk or to your consolidation point in a zone box, which we'll look at in a moment. So Kevin, how many fibers are coming in on this um, trunk cable? Uh, this would be a 64 fiber, should be a 64 fiber cable. Um, I believe we have eight, eight legs coming out, which we do. And this is an eight fiber. We're talking again about an eight fiber edge product. It could be 12 also. Uh, it depending, just depending on what the customer needs. Excellent, so we have all the pairs coming in here and we're breaking out to uh, multiple, eight multiple MTPs. Correct. Right, 64 fibers coming in here and eight by eight going out to eight of these connectors. And then those further break out to uh, single LCs, a single network, a single connection, maybe to a desktop, maybe to a switch. Excellent, well, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's get a little bit nearer to the desktop sure. and show us how this breaks out as it goes down the line. Sure. All right, Kevin, we're getting a little bit near to the desktop here. Can you explain what's going on with this distribution system, please? Absolutely, so this portion is what we just saw at the, at the rack. So here is one of our, um, one of our edge panels. Um, these are our cassettes that we saw with the LCs plugged into the front, LC duplex patch ports plugged into the front. This would be a trunk cable, so a, a long running trunk cable that goes to a floor box usually at a consolidation point or a zone box. And what we do is we will have our multiple networks still separate in the, in the telecom room. This is the point where they become, where they move together. So we'll take a pair each from each of our four different colors coming in. We would have two other colors here, but it's just a mock-up, so we don't today. And then coming out, we have our trusty MTP connector again, and there will be four separate networks on here. Um, this will run from our zone box to our, what ultimately is our desk. Okay, so where we are right now is we have in our, in our um, rack over there, we have access to multiple networks. We're now getting to the point where we're going to combine different networks into a single eight fiber cable for use nearer to the desktop. And it'll be up to the user to determine which network they're going to connect to. So let's pick it up from there. All right, so we have a few options at the desk. Uh, most commonly we see either a, this is a traditional, uh, fits into a single gang faceplate. Um, this would be a housing that holds our cassette, so this sometimes gets mounted up under a desk, and then the cassette is slid into it, and then we use, again, LC patch cords to get ourselves to our um, computer. So, okay, patch cord, LC patch cords, and computer. But this is near the desktop, and we have access to four different networks. Correct. We can also key these, so there are times where uh, the user may prefer to have some physical security as well, and ensure that somebody doesn't plug into the wrong, the wrong termination or the wrong network. So, um, okay, there we go. So we have a keyed patch cord. This one is keyed, so you'll notice it doesn't, it won't actually snap and connect. You'll hear an audible snap when, when you terminate LC duplex. This one snapped all the way in because it is not keyed. So you can't accidentally plug into the wrong network if you're using the keying system. You don't have to use a keyed system. You can use standard connectivity, but some folks like the added security of a keyed system. Excellent, so near the desktop, the user's gonna have access to, in this case, four different networks. Yes. Down here, we're seeing the six it's different networks, so correct. the MTP, in this case, would carry uh, 12 fibers. Correct. But then the user can select the net networks. There's a little bit of physical protection here, but of course, um, most protection is gonna be on some kind of domain controller, whether that user is authorized to connect to that network or not. But a little bit of physical security doesn't hurt. 
Well, Kevin, that's very, very interesting. Thanks for showing us that. Now, we're going to go and talk to your friend Becky in a second, and we're going to have a demonstration of how a fibre is actually terminated. Kevin, for the moment, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, so we've covered the distribution side of the, the shop. Becky is kind enough to show us how we might actually terminate one of these fiber cables. As you can see, we have a termination kit. Becky, how do we do it? This is actually one of the easiest processes in the market today. So what I have here today is called our Unicam kit. And our Unicam is a no epoxy, no polish connector. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the connector into the tool. So I'm gonna push my load button in, to get this piece out of the way, drop the connector into place, and bring the load button back down. That load button holds this into place. I have a VFL right here, which is a visual fault locator. I'll drop that over the top of the connector, and then I'll close the tool. And I have a green light here. We also have an amber light that will show up if I've done something wrong. It tells me before I've done anything. So I'll never waste a connector if there's a reason I didn't load it properly. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna set it down and it will be waiting for me when I'm ready. So I'll prepare the fiber. First thing to do is take out your stripping tools and we'll be taking the coating off the fiber. The fiber itself has two coatings. It has a tight buffer coating, which is 900 micron. I'll take that off first. And co Corning has something called a TB2 coating, which allows it to slide up very easily. The next, I'm going to take off a 250 micron coating. And you can see that here. If I don't take this coating off, I won't be able to cleave the fiber. So I've taken that off. Now I need to make sure I get that nice and clean. So I will take a wipe and some alcohol here. Just get some alcohol on here. Start at the back of the fiber so you don't break it. And you just swipe up. Two times is sufficient. Lastly, what I'm going to do is cleave the fiber. So I need to cleave it in order to put it into the connector that's in the tool and this cleave tool will actually cleave it at the right angle. Inside the tool there are two arms. These buttons control those arms. I need the arms to come up in order to load the fiber. So I will put the fiber into the cleave tool and I will push it all the way through until it stops on its own. Then I let go of those buttons and you can see the arms are holding the fiber in place. This is the actual cleave button. I cleave my fiber, and now I will leave that old fiber in and just take out the cleaved piece. So I'll remove this later. But now it's time to put the fiber into the connector and complete the termination. So I'll insert the fiber into the back of the connector here. And when I feel it hit the fiber that's already inside, I will put a little a curve in here to hold pressure while I hit this cam button. This cam button is rotating the cam on the connector, hence the name for Unicam. Now I got a green light. If I had done something wrong or the word didn't uh, work properly, then the light would be red. Again, another safekeeping in case you don't want to ruin that connector. So I've got a green light, so I'm going to head to crimp it. Now I'll open the tool up and take the fiber out. And I have just completed my connector. So I'm just gonna move the boot up, push it into the back here, take this guy off. I don't need that any longer. Push the boot up inside and I'm done, voila. Excellent. Be Becky, things have really moved along since I was last doing this work quite yes. a few years ago now, but that is much easier than it used to be, yes. uh, super efficient. Becky, thanks so much for showing us that, demonstrating Thank it. You. Well, we've had a great time here at the um, Rocky Mountain Cyber Symposium. Guys, um, thanks very much, Kevin, Becky. Hopefully, we'll catch up with you again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and to like because we have a lot more content coming from Colorado Springs. I'm Andrew Howard from Secure Ninja TV. We'll talk to you again soon.